Like I said, there's no point in you having this. I can put it to far better use. I'm taking it with me, okay? That's fine by me, then, as you wish. So there's no way you could have been at the scene of the crime. That's right. I was drinking at the bar with Nick until early morning. I'm sure if you ask him about it, he'll say the same. Very well. I'll be sure to do that. But one other thing. That argument with Carol just now. She's always like that. She thinks of me as an enemy. Is there any reason for that? Perhaps because someone she liked ended up with me in my bed? That would explain it, yes. If I may be so bold, who was the lucky man? Oh, I sleep with anyone I wish. Anyone I prefer to sleep with. I guess she had her eye on one of them, but I don't know who it was exactly. I could sleep with you, if you like. I'm flattered by your offer, but I don't think that would be appropriate. You're exactly the kind of woman a man in my job should never get involved with. Isn't that a shame, darling? I'll be frank. Right now, you are not a suspect. But both Zack and I are certainly feeling shaky about you. If you want to remain in the clear, just watch yourself from now on. Oh. You don't know, do you? Artists and art lovers, we love a good thrill. Thank you for your help. I have nothing further to ask you at the moment. Goodbye. I had a chat with Diane. She said she was at the bar drinking with Nick at the time of the murder. We need to confirm her story. Let's talk to Nick at the diner. Very well, Agent Morgan. I have to head back to the department and clear up some paperwork. Go with Emily to the AMG diner. Okay, then. I'll show you the way. The diner's open from 9 to 2100. Just as we suspected, Zach. Diane is the key to this case. I have a feeling she will lead us right to the criminal.
Emily, do you know a man named Forrest Kaysen? Kaysen? Yes, I, I know him. The, the sapling salesman, right? He always uses strange comparisons when he talks. I'd like to know more about him. What does he do when he comes to town? He's a salesman, so I guess he sells things. Maybe he comes on vacation. I, we haven't seen many tourists recently, but he comes pretty often. Is that all? Well, now that you mention it, he seems quite friendly with the Ingrams, with Isaac and Isaiah. Maybe you should ask them about Kaysen. Okay, I will. The A and G Diner. I wonder what the A and G stand for. Any ideas, Emily? Nope, I don't know either. Air and gravity, perhaps? Access and games? Aliens and Godzilla? Who knows? Is it important to know? I mean, why don't you just ask Nick? First, I need to eat. I wonder what's good here. Welcome, Mr. Agent. Hi, Olivia. Let me have your special for today. And some fresh coffee. Our special today is turkey. A turkey and gravy sandwich. Sound good? Perfect. Emily, you eat something, too. It'll be on the FBI. Okay, then. I'll go all out. I'll have the T-bone steak. I usually can't order it because it's a little too expensive. This is Olivia Cormack. I am here for Mr. Stewart's lunch. If it is ready, I thank you a bunch. Yes, of course. Just a moment. Here you go. The usual. One turkey, strawberry jam, and cereal sandwich. Sounds like the sinner's sandwich. Self-inflicted punishment to atone for past sins. He's setting an example. Mr. Francis York Morgan, you should try this wonderful lunch. It's more than a delicious, tasty crunch. So says Mr. Stewart. No, that's fine. I've just ordered my own lunch. Mr. Francis York Morgan, I, that is, Mr. Stewart's order is delicious, I should mention. And Mr. Nick Cormack is a genius for creating this perfection. So says Mr. Stewart. Still, I have a hunch I might not like it. Are you sure that sandwich is that good? Mr. Francis York Morgan Making decisions based on intuitions is always a sign of bad FBI agents. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, you're right. I'll give it a try. Olivia, I'm sorry, but can I change my order? I'll have what Harry's had. Nick and Diane. They hardly make the perfect couple, do they? Is it widely known that they go drinking together, just the two of them? To be honest, I don't pay attention to these things. Not into local gossip? Well, when I moved here, I was still in high school, and I kept wearing the same wild clothes from my school in Seattle. 
I was young back then. And before I knew it, there were rumors all over the school. She'll screw anyone. That's what they said. Totally unfounded, of course. Anyway, after that, I just sort of chose not to really trust gossip. I get where you're coming from. I used to dress like a hardcore punk rocker when I was in high school. <laughs> you? A punk rocker? <laughs> Nobody took my side. Even when I had good grades, people rejected me just because of what I wore. I was young back then, too. <laughs> Even still, I just don't see you as a punk rocker. <laughs> and you laugh? Look at you. No makeup on, dressed in uniform, eating a steak for lunch. Okay, back to work. Let's talk to Nick. Thank you. 